Hi, it's Tuesday, June 14th, 2016. Uh, Maneco 64 here, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, I want to talk about divide and conquer today. That's like basically a strategy used by people in power of organizations and mainly governments, I would say, countries or states. And according uh, to feedback uh, on or Wikipedia on uh, Google, it says the policy of maintaining control over one's subordinates or opponents by encouraging dissent between them, thereby preventing them from uniting in opposition. Basically, it's a policy of keeping everyone, you know, fighting with each other, you know, this group against this group, you know, while uh, the people in charge keep control of everyone. And I've noticed so much of this strategy coming through, especially this year, 2016. You've got, you know, Christians against Muslims now. You've got heterosexuals against homosexuals. You've got English against Russians. You, you, at the Euro 2016, which is the European football championships taking place in France, the English fans and the Russian fans are killing each other almost. You know, it's like a war down in Marseille in France. What else have you got? Uh, you've got... Brexit, UK against the European Union, even though I, I personally think UK, the UK should leave the European Union, but it's distracting people from the main problem, which is the disintegration of our financial monetary system, which started in 2008 and has not, has not, I repeat, been fixed, as told by our uh, financial elite and our politicians. I just uh, received a book in the Post, uh, Mervyn King, uh, ex-governor of the Bank of England, and it's called The End of Alchemy. I haven't started, I started reading a little bit of it, but basically I've read reviews of the book. And you might think, why do you want to read uh, a book by the governor of the Bank of England, former governor? Well, because a lot of times, you know, you have to learn things from these people. But from what I've read, Mervyn King actually thinks that things haven't been solved. We haven't had the reforms. And the main reason, he says, is that the banking finance lobby is too powerful and they've basically bought out the politicians in the UK, in the US, in Europe. You look at uh, the crisis in Europe, Europe, sovereign debt crisis. They replaced uh, governments in Europe with ECB technocrats and bankers back in 2011. There's an article, uh, I'll put the link below, uh, by Ambrose Evans Pritchard from the Daily Telegraph, and he's a finance economics writer, and he's very mainstream, but he's going for leaving the EU, and he talks about how the EU is very dictatorial. So I put that link to this article, but getting back to divide and rule, these the events, you know, we've seen uh, this weekend in Orlando are horrible, and you know, there's so much you can feel like, oh, this this was against uh, gays, which it was. Oh, no, this is Islamic. You know, this and, and Trump having a go at uh, Obama for not mentioning Islamic, you know, fundamentalism. And it's all so it feels like it's all brewing up, in my opinion. And Euro 2016, Brexit. And in the background, though. The currencies are debasing, you know, the pound is continuing to be debased. And I think there will be some kind of crisis. And like uh, 
Ram Emanuel, who I think at the time he, you know, he was uh, chief, uh, well, he worked for the Obama administration, Ram Emanuel, and he's the mayor of Chicago. He's He said once that uh, there's never a, a better time than a crisis to do things that people would normally not want you to. So yeah, I, I think we're such, you know, the world is in such conflict right now. You've got also people, you know, left versus right, you know, Democrats versus Republicans, you know, Bernie Sanders, you know, being like a socialist, communist, Trump being more free market. And no one's focusing on the fact that, uh, you know, the powers that be and the banking system hasn't been fixed. No one's been punished. And the general public is paying for it through inflation. I don't care if people say there's deflation, but all the necessary things people need to live, especially here in the UK, like housing, you know, health. I know we don't pay for health here. We've got the NHS, but the quality has gotten worse. That's inflation. We've got another thing called shrinkflation, which is the shrink shrinkage of packaging and then keeping the same price. That's inflation, but you know, it's hidden. It's very subtle and uh, it's all out there. So in my opinion, uh, yeah, this is what they're using right now. And uh, I think the best way to protect against this strategy is not to let yourself be lured into this strategy of hating all different groups. <laughs> there is no such thing as groups. We are all human beings, you know, we're individuals. It doesn't matter if your sexual, uh, you know, predilection, your religious views, or your color, or if you're male or female, we're all individuals. And that's what we have to focus on. Don't let the powers that be uh, get you into this mindset of divide and conquer. And the best way to protect yourself financially, of course, is still to accumulate precious metals, physical precious metals, gold and silver, some Bitcoin. Bitcoin, you know, is risky. It's only seven years old, but it's interesting. It's more of a speculative thing and it's done really well. So yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about this morning. Divide and conquer. Don't let it fool you. And uh, we, we are all individuals. That's what we have to focus on. And uh, be careful because if, you know, this is all related to the financial system, in my opinion. After all, uh, Hank Paulson, who was the U.S. Treasury Secretary back during the financial crisis, he had a meeting at the New York Fed, I think, with all the major bankers from New York. And he actually said, there's a documentary movie, I forgot the name, but he said, the West is foobard. I don't want to say the word he actually said. It starts with an F. And uh, I think he was right. We just patched things up. And uh, so uh, this is the year of the, the Jubilee, as uh, Jeff Berwick uh, has been saying, oh, the Super Shemitah, the 49th year. So I, I expect quite a, f quite a few things happening uh, in the next, you know, it's happening already now. So with that, uh, you know, I leave you uh, for now. And uh, if you like uh, this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching, and uh, have a good day. Bye.